Facebook have or not? Yeah. Can you hear my fan echo? No. My fan is on as well. Maybe, okay. But my voice is okay, right? Voice quality? Yeah, yeah. Start and okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are live. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we are live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in to our Q&A live today. Uh, today we have with us Taos from Onyx Hospitality Group. In fact, he's also a Singaporean. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Sawadi Krab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll wait for more followers to join us before we do a wow. proper start. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Thanks mm. for tuning in as well. Can everybody hear us loud and clear? Do comment in the comment box below. Let me go to Facebook as well as we are waiting. <laughs> yeah. So if you are joining us for this uh, Facebook Live, do like, share, and yeah, share this, this uh, Q&A with your friends if you want to know the updates about uh, hotels in Bangkok. And today we are joined by Charles who is uh, with one of the very big hospitality group in Bangkok. So uh, in fact, they have some updates for us to tell us what is going to happen after like COVID-19, what steps are they going to take to, mm -hmm. of course, make everybody have a pleasant experience okay, when you stay in the hotels. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So now we have like about 43 with us. So oh, that's nice. A bit more, a little okay, more. Okay, sure. <laughs> So thanks for joining us on a Friday night. This is really fun. So we have craft communications. Oh, they <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So we have fifty now. Okay, so uh, let's start this Q&A live. Okay, hi everybody, my name is Wilbur and with me I have Charles, with me Charles, um, Vice President Marketing and Com of Onyx Hospitality Group. Yeah, so if you don't know, he's also a Singaporean. <laughs> so yeah, a Singaporean working in Bangkok. <laughs> so maybe I will let Charles introduce a bit about himself before we move on to the topic yeah okay. Charles. thank you Wilbur um, so it's nice to be here on a Friday night with all of you um, Singaporean myself but I've been living and working in Bangkok for the last five years so I'll just start off by saying Sabadi crap thank you for joining us that's about all the Thai I can master <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I um, with, uh, with 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 this opportunity thanks Wilbur as well for letting me join in it's Friday night in Bangkok and as you know um, this, the whole world is under a certain sense of, uh, uh, you know, various measures of lockdown that's going on, um, and Bangkok is no different. Um, so, so I, I guess um, this is an evening that we want to, you know, we want to share with you, take this opportunity to share with you what the situation is like in Bangkok in terms of um, for someone like me living here. And um, so, as I mentioned, I've been living here for the last five years. I work for a hotel company. Um, known as Onyx Hosp Hospitality Group. Um, our office is actually located just next to, or just behind Amari Watergate, which I understand is a very popular hotel among Singaporeans for many, many reasons. Um, and this hotel, like many others in this city, um, because we don't have travelers coming in, um, as you can imagine, the flight connections into many parts of the world, from every part of the world to many parts of the world, are now stopped. All the planes are parked. Um, as, and as a result, it's not just Amari Watergate, but many of the other big hotels, as well as smaller hotels in Bangkok, are temporarily closed. Um, so um, what's happening with Amari Watergate? Maybe we'll go into that later, but um, just a quick introduction is that we are taking this closure as the opportunity and the time to do some very much needed renovations. Um, and also we are doing staff training so that when we eventually are able to open and eventually, hopefully, hopefully when you guys from Singapore also able to come to Bangkok, that we have a fresh, new, updated product for you. Um, and that you will continue to have a great time like you have in the last many, many years that you've been frequenting Bangkok. 
Yeah. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Uh, in fact, uh, Amari Autogate is very close to my heart because um, even before I started our remember.com when I was like in maybe primary school, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I stayed in Amari Watergate and some other hotels in Pratunam. Uh, and staying in a five-star hotel in Pratunam, which is Amari Watergate, uh, it brings back a lot of memories because like it's one of the top hotels in the area. And then uh, what I like uh, is right, when you go to the bathroom in the hotel, you can also enjoy the music while, while you're enjoying your toilet session. <laughs> <laughs> and then apart from that, uh, the breakfast is also very impressive. I mean, like mm. uh, the food is so delicious and really make a deep impression on me. Like. Yeah, so that's why even throughout these years, I have been like visiting Amari Watergate here and there. Even if I'm not staying there, I will also like drop by. That's the right. Lobby to, yeah, and we always try to so we always try to catch up for coffee as well when you yeah. drop by. Yeah, because my right. office is right there as well. And actually, as you mentioned this, you know, I want to say thank you. Thanks for your you know ongoing love for Amari Watergate, <laughs> um, and also to many of the Singaporeans. Um, I I work near the hotel or rather my office is connected mm. to the hotel um during the yeah. good times i remember when i leave when i go out of the hotel and go to platinum mall it feels like going mm. to Tokayo because you're hearing <laughs> singapore accent it mm, it doesn't true. feel like i'm not in singapore it just feels yeah. like you know I'm, I'm going into another housing estate because almost <laughs> every other person i run into on the street is speaking singlish and that's true, you know true, to me true. that's a nice sense of home um, and I guess the second thing I want to also add is um, many of you, many of your Aramak my audience know who Laura is. Laura is a mm, social media yeah. manager for Amari Watergate and a few a few other hotels in Bangkok. Um, she's very well. She's send, she sends her regards to everyone. She's of course working from home at this time. Um, and well, I'm here standing in on, on her behalf, but when the hotel is close <laughs> to reopening, I believe um, she'll be back in touch with Wilbur and you'll see a bit more of her um, in person as well. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, yeah. so uh, anyway, let's move on. Uh, maybe mm. we can tell, let the audience know. Uh, maybe like which hotels are actually under Onyx Hospitality, like okay. because we all of us know Amari Watergate, right? But in sure. fact, Onyx Hospitality also hosts a lot of other hotels in. That's right. I mean, in Thailand and also overseas, right? That's right. So yeah. um, okay. very good question. So I, I work for Onyx um, and why I love working for Onyx is because we are a growing company. Right now we have 52 hotels across seven countries um, in Asia Pac. So other than Amari, um, which is very well known for hotels as well as resorts across Thailand, we have Amari hotels in Johor Bahru, which is just across the causeway. So hopefully once the circuit break- breaker measures are lifted and Malaysia has also lifted their MCO measures, um, our Singapore friends can also go across the causeway to have a bit of that Thai experience because we have really good Thai food there too. Um, but other than mm. that, we are growing Amari into places like Sri Lanka, we are opening, um, we have an Amari in Gaul as well as um, coming up in Colombo that's opening very soon in the next 12 months. We also have Amari hotels in China, in Yangshuo, in Guilin, as well as in places, um, in, in, in this one, there's another one that's coming up in Penang. And there are actually two other key brands that are part of Onyx um, that Singaporeans are also quite familiar with. One is Sharma, which is a service apartments brand, um, which also behaves like a hotel because we have um, friends from around the whole world who stay in Sharma properties on a, you know, they can stay for short term. And I guess our most famous one among the Singapore Singaporean crowd is the Sharma Lakeview Asok in Bangkok. Um, located um, quite near Terminal 21, which is a very well-known mall as well. And other than that, we also have Ozo. Ozo is uh, a very, you know, it's a hotel that we created about eight years ago. Uh, It's still, you know, it's going from strength to strength. We have Ozo hotels in Hong Kong, in Sri Lanka, in Koh Samui, and we have new ones opening in Penang, in Pattaya, as well as, um, as well as across the causeway. Um, very near Legoland that's opening quite soon. Oh. So as a group, we have hotels um, that are opening not just in Thailand, but also in other parts of Asia that Singaporeans love to travel to. Yeah, I in fact, yeah. I've stayed in many of your properties before. The I think the newest will be Ozo Phuket. The yes, Michelin. that's right. You were there yeah. as well. Recently. Very nice place. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Good to hear New, that. Yeah. clean and close to the beach. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yes, thanks oh, for the support. Yeah, no problem. Are all yeah. the hotels still open at the moment or are they okay um closed? many of the it's a combination of our 52 hotels across asia pacific we have about 
you know, about 20 over hotels are temporarily closed. So that includes hotels in Malaysia, of course, mm. as you know, for, for obvious reasons, um, in, in certain parts of Thailand. Why, why hotels are closed is because in certain places like Phuket, Pattaya, Koh Samui, um, the, the municipal governments have uh, ordered all hotels to close for the time being. Oh, okay. And we decide to also close because of safety. Um, it's to ensure that our team members are able to stay home and, 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 and you know, it's the best thing to do now for everyone is to stay home um, unless the situation has improved in, in where you live. So that's, 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 our, that's doing our part to also um, contribute towards, you know, for any further preventing any further spread of the virus. Um, in mm. certain locations, we close also because it just doesn't make financial sense to have hotels open when there are you know, when travelers cannot get to where you are. Um, and obviously these are all temporary measures and we, you know, across the board, many of our hotels are scheduled to reopen around 1st of July, but of course we, closer to time, we will decide whether that's the appropriate time. Can we do it earlier? Can we do it later? And right now, why we are so busy is also because we are supporting the hotels and once we are getting ready to open, we have a lot of, um, we're just, just doing lots of work to make sure that the hotels open smoothly and successfully mm. and that you know if when our first guests who come back and visit us they have the best possible stay too mm, sounds good yeah mm. i think the covid 19 have really changed the whole world so that's right um, so what, what are some of the new measures that uh, onyx hospitality will be taking when they reopen maybe you can share with us Sure, sure. Um, and, mm. and I think how this conversation came about with Wilbur is because um, I sent him some information about a yeah. program that we, we are doing. It's called Onyx Clean. Mm. So what yeah. Onyx Clean really is, is that um, I guess to start things off, let me um, you know just highlight as hotels are always very particular about cleanliness and hygiene and safety. That's always been in our blood. You know, when when a, when when you when a guest decides to check into any of our hotels, you can expect a very clean stay. Everything has to be tip top, and that's always been the case. However, because of COVID nineteen, everybody, you know, there's a lot of media telling you wash your hands, sanitize. There's a lot more awareness on hygiene and safety and wellness. So as a result, what we have decided is that we look at our existing measures, which are already very good, but we enhance them further. We enhance them further by doing extra things. For example, in the case of, um, in the past, housekeepers would clean your room just coming in with no mask and no, you know, hit no hand net. Um, however, right now, because of COVID, all house housekeepers, um, as part of the measures of Onyx Clean, every housekeeper will be issued with mask, gloves, or the right protective gear. And um, in addition to that, we will be doing additional sanitization of high touch areas. So in a hotel room, things like your remote controls, your taps, mm -hmm. you know, we have we have created a strict checklist where every single room, you know, for, for before a housekeeper is able to say that my job is complete, I have done this number of things. So what we're doing is basically enhancing our checklist, enhancing our measures. Um, when hotel guests check into our hotels in, in the near future, every room will have a seal. What it what it what it, it's trying to tell you is that um you know your space has been professionally clean and disinfected and sanitized before you entered. No one, you know, before you got to your room, no one else has actually been in to do anything that could endanger the room. So the last person who was in there was your housekeeper who has cleaned it, sanitized it professionally, and it's been sealed. So that's one, one measure. Other measures we are doing would be doing, um, as you can imagine, across the world now in Singapore as well, doing temperature checks, um, making sure that there's safe distancing during during check-in um, to, to ensure that if, if there happens to be a queue, that the queue is managed properly um, and that everything that is used during the check-in, whether it's a pen or a key or a key card, that they are all sanitized using either wipes or the right disinfectants or using UV sanitizers. And we also, because we are a big um, user of products by Ecolab, which is a hygiene product supplier. We have developed these guidelines with their with their um, with their collaboration as well. So it's it's, it's essentially a, a long list of things that we are doing in addition to our really existing um, strong measures. Um, and also, as you can imagine, with many of our hotels being temporarily closed, we take this time to 
have our colleagues who are at home go back to school and how do they go back to school they are doing something like this you know they they have they are given resources where they can log into certain videos that we create in house and what the videos teach them uh, various subjects it could be learning how to improve your mandarin so that when our chinese guests are back you can serve your chinese guests better but you know closer to the subject at hand is also teaching them about the importance of hygiene um, and showing step by step how you clean a room how do you clean a lift button so that you know a when we are all ready to reopen, all our team members who are doing their respective jobs, they have new knowledge. Mm, yeah, sounds very good. So are uh, mm. all these uh, measures going to be long-term or, or what? Maybe I would say the, 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 the thing now is that we will, we, we will monitor. Obviously, okay. all these are important measures. You know, having, mm. having a clean hotel is always important whether or not there is COVID. And obviously, yeah. because of COVID, hotels and everywhere you go to, they do extra things. Whether mm. or not, you know, these measures get relaxed, it really depends on consumer mindset. It really depends on how the situation is going. Um, but what I would also say is that there is no situation... You know, there will never be a situation where we relax the measures to the degree that you find a dirty hotel room. That's never been mm -hmm. the case anyway. So, you know, yeah. you know, cleanliness and hygiene is always um, top, in, top priority and even more so now. Uh, and I guess, you know, what we want to also tell our uh, travelers, you know, from Singapore and all around, around the world is when, when it's time for you to get on a plane again, to go to any of our hotels, when you walk in, you can be sure that you, you know, you are in a very safe and comfortable and clean hotel environment. And that it's very unlikely that you will be catching anything in our hotels because we've done everything possible to pre prevent that from happening. Yeah, definitely. We have yeah. full trust, especially for yes. our next hospitality. <laughs> and actually, it's quite quite interesting. You know, after 9-11, we started to have to take off our shoes when we before we go to a, go, we bought a flight. We have to put um, everything in a Ziploc bag. So well, it'll be interesting to see what new habits uh, COVID-19 will leave with us in terms of how we live our lives going forward. But already things are changing and I think we are all picking up new skills. Yeah, definitely. Especially yeah. like live conferencing, right? Zoom, <laughs> <laughs> Swim Yeah, That's right. I think one of the concerns from the generic travelers um, mm. I mean, not not specifically to Onyx Group, but do you think yes. that uh, with all these new measures, right, will the mm. prices of hotel increase in general? Do you think in Bangkok the prices will increase because of all these ma new measures in place? I don't believe so. You know, I've, I've mm. you know this is a good question, and I've been asked this by other journalists as well. Mm. And I you know I spoke to our senior management. The thing yeah. is, clean, cleanliness is a commitment. You know, safety. Mm wellness cleanliness is a commitment from us to you um, as mm -hmm. a business when we have you staying with us you know it's like it's almost like you going to a Starbucks if you go to a Starbucks you want to make sure that the ceiling doesn't fall on you that's basic safety yeah. but when you go to a Starbucks it's maybe just a one hour if you go in you know use the Wi-Fi leave but in a case of a hotel when you come to us you are actually sleeping with us your experience with us takes you know it's, it's more than something around a 24-hour period you have the thing is, when when you have a, a building that's full of people who are sleeping overnight, um, they they come to you because they trust you for the safety that you provide. Um, and with with this commitment to safety, it is it is not our intention to pass any of the costs to the consumer. These are you know these are essential costs. The the the, the operational costings may go up as a result of all these additional measures but these are essential so we we don't see we don't see there is no intention of any of my hotel mm -hmm. and i believe in of, of any other hotel group to you know to up the charges just because we are using more sanitizers i think i think mm -hmm. it's really more about safety it's more about making sure that we are providing the best possible safe experience um and obviously you know perhaps you know the when you check into a hotel you sometimes will see a bowl of a platter of fruit that may be replaced with <laughs> something that's more relevant right because now if i mm. if i look at a plate of fruit that's not covered i probably won't touch it but i may change that welcome amenity to something like hand sanitizers which, which i can then mm. use when i go out so i think it's about shifting the focus to different things and i i i, I seriously do not believe that any you know if there's any rise in cost that the consumer will end up bearing the cost of it yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, so it's you I, know, I, I, yeah. Mm, go ahead, uh, Wilbur. Uh, I believe I think some of the Singaporeans, or I mean not only Singaporeans. In fact, we have a lot of followers from all around the world. I think some mm. of them might have booked uh your 
stay in some of your hotels before. Um, mm. So what is your hotel doing with regards to all these um, cancellation and mm. delayed stay sure. and so on? Sure. Yeah. Um, we're not the only hotel to do this, just like mm. any other hotel company, you know, COVID-19 is something no one wants to happen. You know, it is, it is, it is a global crisis. Um, since the very beginning, when even back in late January, when this whole, this whole situation surfaced, we were very upfront. We were the first to announce that when it came to any bookings, um, we would honor either cancellations or, or delays or date changes without any penalty. Dep you know, regardless of the booking conditions. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, this is something that we have honored. And, you know, with, with that it is also our way of um, assuring our, you know, our hotel, you know, our travelers, many of them who've been staying with us for many, many, you know, years that, um, you know, this is something that no one wants to happen. And, you know, we, we honor any of the changes you have to make. Um, but of course, when it's time to fly again, we hope that you remember us for the flexibility mm -hmm. we offered you and that we would be among the first hotels you would consider booking as well. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's take, thinking long term it's, and it's also putting the trust in the guests that when they have to make a cancellation, it's all for valid reasons. Yeah, I think yeah. this also brings to one point, like, because I think in recent years, many of the travelers love to book by a third party, um, Comparing mm -hmm. sites, right? Places That's like right. and booking.com. Right. So That's I think right. uh, recently when I saw their ads being posted on Facebook, a lot of them are complaining that they can't get refunds and so on. So I think this is one of the big and good reason why uh, travelers should book direct with hotels, right? Yeah, we we you know that's a good point. We definitely see this as a, as an opportunity. It's not just in the hotel space. I think mm. many of us also during this lockdown we can't go to restaurants. We have to either cook yeah. or if we are too lazy to cook, we have to order food. And when we mm. order food, we can order food directly from the restaurants or we can use apps like Food Panda. So Food Panda is very much like an OTA as well, and obviously they charge a commission. And yeah. as you can see, I think with this whole COVID crisis, there's this whole. There's this whole um, movement towards book local, you know, eat local, support local. So I think what um, what is, is also uh, very similar in the travel world that um, the way we see it is that, you know, we are because hotels, when you come to us direct, we can offer you more flexibility. What we hope as well is that as as the situation improves, um, our consumers will also think of booking direct with us rather than um, considering other 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 of the platforms, which are still important to us. You know, they will still continue to be important. Um, but we just we just want to let our consumers and our travelers know that you know if you book direct with us, you probably have an easier time when it comes to cancellations, when it comes to making any customizations, because you are talking to us direct. And the same thing is happening in the food industry as well and in, in many other cases. Thanks for the great feedback on the tickers as well. Amazing hotel, thank you. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you hearing me okay? Are you hearing me okay? Okay, Wilbur, I'm done. So maybe the next question or we can continue chatting. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. No, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, let me unplug this. Charles, can you hear me? Okay, Wilbur, I'm done. So maybe... The next question or we can continue chatting. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I think some disconnection on my side. <laughs> Don't worry, I think there's a time lag as well. Okay, um yeah. Okay. Yo, okay. So I think I think one of the next question will be um what for the f and b in like maybe onyx mm -hmm. hospitality group, tea group uh like for breakfast what are the new steps going that will be taking place because like now we we can't like everybody go to breakfast together right so what are some of the new measures okay um with breakfast 
I, I, I think, you know, when, when travellers start to come back, um, for the initial period, it's very likely that breakfast will be served as an a la carte service. Um, that's because you know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, you know concerns about safety of a buffet. So I think you know with the hospita hospitality industry, it just you know buffets may make a return, but a bit later, buffets work well when you have a hotel that is rather full. You know, when you have a full house operation, buffets work well. But in the first few months when a hotel is not reaching high capacity, it is very likely that we offer a la carte as an option. However, buffets will come back. We believe so. Um, but there will be changes in terms of the buffet setup, as many of you have been to Amaya Food Gallery. We are looking at ways to design um, protective shields for the food such that you can still see and touch the food or you can look at what you need but you know in case someone sneezes there is that protective guard that's one thing the second thing as well is that you know in many hotels buffets are heading towards more cook to order rather than a big dish of food that just keeps boiling so we are also we've always taken that approach and we'll continue to do that approach and when it comes to items like salads rather than have a big bowl of salad what we might do then is that we portion the salads into jars that are closed. If you want some salad, you take a jar. And if you want more salad, take two jars. You know, it, it might lead to more washing up and all that, but it's all in the name of safety, assurance, and still giving people the variety as well. Because when you travel on a holiday to a place like Thailand, you expect your buffets. So I think buffets will come back when the numbers come back as well and when confidence increases. But right at the beginning, it is very likely that perhaps um, a la carte and you know room service might be the way to go <laughs> i can't hear uh, wilbur you are on mute you are on mute uh wilbur you are on mute wilbur Wilbur, you are on mute. You need to unmute. Oh, hello, hello. Ah, yes. Can you hear me? Ah, you, yes, you, you, you were on mute now? earlier. Yes, I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yeah, there is a bit of a technical lag. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, okay. So we have some questions from Stella. From this one, Stella. So what is okay. your performance in terms of business? No, expectation in terms of business performance in Asia for the rest of 2020? You know, I think it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, I wish I had a crystal ball for something like this. Um, none of us really know um, because everything is down to how this whole COVID-19 situation improves over across the region. Um, you know, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, however, having said that, we do think that in many countries across Southeast Asia, the situation is improving. So, you know, we are hearing more and more good news. So let's hope that that situation continues to improve. And obviously, you know, once the, once the situation improves, um, I, I think we can start to look at things like domestic tourism. Um, in the case of Thailand, one of our biggest markets, for example, it's very likely that, the, you know, in case the borders are still closed, we will be promoting our hotels to the local market first before going regional, before going long haul. So I think it's all a step-by-step -step approach, and that's how many other countries are doing it as well. Um, so what's, you know, back to this answer, what's your expectation in terms of business performance? It's a very difficult question to answer. Um, every hotel company is hoping that, um, you know, the situation improves and once it improves that travel can happen safely. And when that happens, we are ready to welcome you back. But for now, it is um, a low power mode for the travel and hospitality business. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. Next we have from Eddie. What Eddie. about check-in and check-out times? Are there any 
changes to them? I don't believe there will be changes to this. When it comes to hotels, check-in and check-out times are done for a reason. And that reason is to ensure that there is sufficient time for housekeeping to do their work. Um, and with all the additional measures, housekeeping probably need a bit more time. So I don't anticipate any changes to check-in and check-out time. It will still stay the way it is. However, the beauty of booking direct as well and having a direct relationship with hotels is if you do have a late flight and you want to have a late checkout time. It's it's really more, more about just asking. And the usual situation as well is that if hotels are not full and if, if hotels can manage the manpower, um, there is very there is usually no reason why they cannot give you the uh, early check-in or late checkout time. The only reason why hotels say no is because they are busy. They have the turnaround. They need to ensure that um, before you check out and the next guest checks in, there is enough time for a room to be serviced. That's the only reason. So I doubt there will be a major change in that. Um, and this is probably here to stay. And given, you know, given the, the additional cleaning measures, we need all the time we, we can get. Okay, regarding the check-in process, right? Um, mm. We have been like thinking about maybe things like mobile check-in. Uh, mm. Is there any possibility of implementing such things like mobile check-in uh, after the pandemic? We are looking into that as a possibility. It's not something that we can confirm that we are doing. And it's also not something we, uh, you know, we are rushing into just because of COVID. Um, the thing about check-in is, you know, like I said earlier, we our focus on check-in is to ensure that there is, um, if there's a queue that is managed properly, um, that we have the right guards in place. Um, right now, many in many of our hotels, when we reopen, that we'll be looking at ways to create uh, an additional level of protection between our front desk agent and also the guest, but still giving that personalized experience, whether it's through face guards or shields, we are looking at that. And everything that we use, whether it's the countertop, or the pen that might be used, or the or, or the key cards that are, are are transacted. All these items will be sanitized to ensure that there is no um you know there's no potential spread of germs. So in terms of check-in, it's about you know making sure things are more much cleaner than they've they've ever been. Um, but when it comes to technology, those are things that we are still exploring. Okay. Um. I think for the next question, do you think food served on board will uh, face stricter hygiene measures? I think this relates to on board in terms of airlines. Yes, I believe so. Um, just so you know, right now in Thailand, domestic flights are starting to fly um, to various airports and they are starting the service with no service of food and drinks for this very reason. Um, but in the long run, I'm very sure airlines will look at how they can enhance hygiene and, and, and safety when it comes to food. Um, so definitely, yes, this will, this will change. And, and over time, it's something that people do expect um, changes to happen. OK, um, so OK, we I think I have gone through all the questions that we have for now. So if you have any other further questions, do comment in the comment box below. So right now, I think we will maybe talk about the situation in Bangkok, since sure. Charles is staying right now in Bangkok, yeah, it, it, it's, it's good for him to give us an update about Bangkok. Sure. So, um, update on Bangkok, I guess, in relation to Singapore as well. Um, as you know, I, you know, I, I fully understand what's going on in Singapore. There's this circuit breaker that's going on. And, you know, it's not convenient. It's causing lots of economic issues. Um, however, it is necessary. In Thailand, in Bangkok, we went through a similar arrangement as well. Um, the semi-lockdown or the added the, the measures um, actually started almost two months ago from March 18th onwards. So what that meant was back then when they announced the measures, shopping malls were closed. When it came to restaurants, it's you know only delivery and takeaways. Barbers are closed, no, no Thai massage, no foot massage. Um, no gyms, no class pass. You know, you can't you can't go to fitness first, for example. Um, and it's very similar in Singapore as well. Um, so the situation in Bangkok is that all these measures are still in place. They have been in place for about six to seven weeks now. Um, the good thing is the numbers in terms of daily infections seem to be stabilizing. Every day we are looking at single digit. Yesterday was one. Today was eight. You know, it's all very manageable. 
Um, and within Bangkok, the numbers are also becoming lower. Um, so there is, it looks like there is a turnaround. It looks like good news is starting to come. And right now, as of latest news, um, I haven't checked Twitter before we started, um, but as of latest news, it looks like the government is looking at a decision to reopen the shopping malls around 17th of May. Um, that's provided there are no further infections and there's no escalation of any danger. Um, but they are, they, they are making arrangements and already right now barbers are open. So they have already lifted certain things such that barbers can open. Cafes and restaurants which are not in a shopping mall can open but with safety distancing. So, you know, I've, I went out over the weekend and I had, had lunch in a, a cafe. And, you know, it's, it's actually nice to go out after almost two months of eating in-house, uh, eating in your house. So, you know, hopefully the situation will improve. Um, but the, I, I guess um, what we can say is everything takes time. Um, Bangkok started our measures way before Singapore. We are only starting to see the results. So in the case of Singapore, I'm sure if everybody does their part, and fingers crossed, if all goes well, um, life can go back to normal as well. So I guess my message to all my friends back home is be patient. We've been through it here as well. And just find ways to stay positive and just do your part. Staying home is really the best thing to do. Okay. Um, from Belinda, any hmm. news of travel ban lifted in Bangkok? Well, I wish I had information on this, but there's no news yet. Um, I think this is something we need to continue to continue to monitor. Um, and once that happens, then I'm sure you know there will still be measures as well in place. Um, but you know, as of now, we still do not know. Um, but having said that, um, I just want to add that for Amari Watergate, our uh, renovations are scheduled to finish by late November. That means that we are hoping to open on the first of December. So fingers crossed, if everybody does their part and the flights are able to fly, hopefully Singaporeans can come to Bangkok for Christmas shopping. <laughs> okay, so um, from the floor, do you have any more questions for Charles or myself? If you have, do comment in the comment box below. Yeah. Do uh, pardon my screen because um, I'm actually having a 30 seconds lag. So, <laughs> I can't really, yeah, be like life, life per se. Understand. So I, I think, think we'll uh, while we are think, waiting for comments, I think, um, yeah, today's session is is quite good. In fact, uh, because we get to really hear from the big leader in Bangkok, uh, what are they going to do in terms of hotels, uh, mm. upping their standards um, mm. after this COVID-19 situation. Mm. Yeah, so I hope that all of you had a good time um, with all this new news from Charles. Yes. Oh, okay. We have another question. What's Amari ah. going to look like when it opens in December? Ah, Damien, thanks for that question. So what it's going to look like is, um, is this. Um, we have new rooms coming up. So Amari Watergate is a relatively big hotel. We have 569 rooms. Of that number of rooms, many of the rooms have been renovated already. But what we are working on now are about 40% of the full room inventory. So that means our new rooms will be even newer. Um, these rooms will have... I would say, to, just to give you a sneak peek of the design, we will be looking at things like hardwood floors with, you know, with rugs rather than wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. We've been designing that because that's, that's, you know, that's something that feels and looks better. It feels like home um, and it's also cleaner. So with the whole concern about COVID and disinfection, our new rooms and the flooring that we chose is going to be much easier to clean. Obviously, you come to Bangkok to stay in a hotel that feels like Bangkok. So we'll still have all the Bangkok touches um, in a contemporary Thai kind of way. So don't worry about staying in a hospital-like environment because that's never been our plan. When you come into our new rooms, it feels like a very nice hotel. Um, and, 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 and one of the things which I've seen with the new design as well is that we have a mini bar that's a freestanding cabinet. <laughs> Now that all of you have been staying home because the bars are closed and you'll be, you'll be, you're all becoming you know, professional bartenders, when you check into our hotels, you can also 
practice a bit of your bartending magic, hopefully. And and you know, we we do think that this is a this design when it comes to the mini bar and where the beverage and the uh, and all the drinks are served is something that looks so good that you might even want it in your house. And over and above that, it's not just about things that you can see. We are also doing lots of works on the things that you can't see. Um, because Amari Watergate is a 26-year-old hotel, we are doing renovations. We are replacing the entire water system, the pipes, the, the ventilation system, the air conditioning, the boilers, and uh, the water supply. Everything will be replaced. So when we reopen in December, you can expect us to be not just the... Uh, nicest looking hotel in Singapore's favorite neighborhood, but we also have the best quality of air and best quality of water because the boilers and everything are brand new. So, you know, with COVID-19 um, and with this whole this whole renewed interest in, you know, wa water, air, and, and just, just cleanliness, what we are hoping to achieve is when we open, we can showcase something that's brand new, spanking clean, um, that's continually maintained and that, you know, Singaporeans and anybody who, who comes in has the, you know, has the healthiest possible stay as they enjoy the best of Bangkok. Hi, Eileen. <laughs> Eileen is actually my colleague. <laughs> Hello, hi, Let me show you some of your friends who are online. Yes, <laughs> yes, all people I know. Thanks for tuning in. Vanessa, hello. <laughs> Viva, my colleague. Lots of support. Okay, let's see if we have any other questions. Ah, wow. Good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So this is a supplier of bird's nest. Can you drop me a drop me a DM and we can always explore separately. Thanks for touching base. Hi, Joseph. Okay, Joseph is the general manager of Amari Watergate. Um, he's also tuning in. So when you check in, he's going to be the one to welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you. And you know, once we reopen in December, it's the cool season. Um, it's also the peak season. It's just before Christmas. Hopefully, you guys can come to Bangkok. And when you come to Bangkok, do drop me a note. Do say hi. My office is very near the Amari. Um, and if, if I can meet up with you over a cup of coffee, um, and hopefully at that time, uh you know you guys can travel and you know let's do that and i would say you know if there's no further questions you know uh, if there are feel free to come in but if not um i would say you know to everyone this is a difficult time for everyone many hotels and you know travel we see airlines everybody is suffering um whatever you do try to stay positive and stay clean and hopefully we can get through this whole nightmare together and become stronger after this Ah, hi, Nikon. Any extension for Onyx membership? Yes, we are giving extensions. And in fact, just to address this question, Onyx Rewards members have actually received an email about the extension of their loyalty status. So the answer is yes to that. And you should have received an email. Um, but if not, feel free to drop me a DM as well, and I can help you if you need any further assistance. Yes, <laughs> A better smoking place. Good question. The plan is for the hotel to be a smoke-free hotel indoors. So we are not um, encouraging, you know, it's, it's a smoke-free hotel. So smoking in guest rooms are not allowed. Um, and that is something that we are proud of as well. Um, however, for smokers, we do have areas outside the hotel um, where smokers can have their dose of fresh air. Um, as to whether that can be improved, I'll talk to Joseph after this. I'm sure we can do something if it's something that Singaporeans really think is important. Thank you, Eddie. Hope we can catch up as well okay. once COVID is over. Yeah, I think um, we have went through all the questions already. So if you have any okay. other further questions, you can comment in the comment box below. Uh, we will after we end this live session we will still be able to reply your comments sure yeah, so 
Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you. thanks, Charles, for thank joining you, us on this panel. Thank you so much. Panel. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for your time. Okay. And stay safe. Hopefully, we can see you in Bangkok or anywhere else in the region with hotels soon. So take good care and enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Later, next round. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Pakunka. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.